Do you want more control over your GarageBand drums? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this by separating out your different drum kit pieces into different tracks. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, if you are creating songs in GarageBand and especially recording drums, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. And I've got videos linked up there and in the description if you want to check out how. But if you are programming in your own drum tracks, you may have realized that you're going to end up with something like this, where you've got all your drums on the one track. Let's take a listen. Now that's okay, right? But what if you want to split these out so that you get something like this, where you've got a separate track for your kick drum, your snare, your toms, your hats, your crashes, your ride cymbal? Well, we can do it, and it's pretty straightforward to do here in GarageBand. So let's jump in and take a look at it now. So let's go back a step here, shall we? I have deleted out all of those individual drum parts because this was the original drums. Now, shout out to Jade Star. She actually created these drums using a set of E drums, and the drummer track is pretty Darn cool, it sounds like this. And if we bring it into our mix of our song, it sounds like this. Not bad, right? Yeah, but we can make it better because what we can do is actually split out this drum performance into separate drum tracks. It's super simple to do, and I'm going to show you how right now. Now, there's a few different ways to approach this, but I'm going to show you my method, and you can adapt it to your own heart's desire. But the way I do it is to duplicate out the drum track. So here is my original drums. These are just programmed in using the original drums here in GarageBand. So if we tap on this one right here on the drums, we hit duplicate, we get the exact same track with the same effects, the same volume, the same everything. And what we can then do, we'll just zoom in a little bit here. We can tap on these original drums. We can tap again. We can copy. And then if we line up our playhead right at the start of these drums, like that, go to our new drum track, tap there, hit paste. You can see here we've got an exact replica of our drums. So what I do is I duplicate out the drums a few times and then reduce them down to just the drum piece that I want. So let's do that first here with the kick. So first up, I'm going to actually rename this track. I'm going to tap, I'm going to go rename because we don't want this to be the original drums anymore. We want this to be our kick. So we can rename it kick or whatever you want to call it. And then what we need to do is tap right here in the actual green section in our MIDI notes here and tap on edit. And this is gonna bring us into our MIDI note editor. If we zoom in by just pinching our fingers together, you can see here are all of our different drum sounds, right? So you can see we've got snare and kick down there. We've got our different toms there. We've got our hi-hat, our crash, our ride, another ride like on the bell. So we've got a bunch of different sounds here. Oop, don't do that. <laughs> undo. Undo is your friend. Uh, so what we can do here now is actually remove everything except the kick. So we only want the kick drum right. It's actually really simple. Let's just tap out here on our drum and we'll... Was that good for you? It was intense, right? So that's all done there. We're just going to tap anywhere in any one of these and tap delete because look what's happened, we're left with just our kick drum. So this has become just our kick drum track. If we come here and play this one, we'll hit done. We will solo this track now, come and solo it, and listen to this. It's just our kick drum, yeah? So here's the cool thing. We can start doing this and layering up our drums so that we have them all on different tracks. I won't show you each individual drum track because I think you get the gist here, but let's just do one more here to make sure that everything is hunky-dory and we're gonna be good to go. So we want our snare, no problem. Let's tap here, we'll tap again, we'll duplicate, and then we'll do the same again. We'll tap, we'll tap again, we'll hit copy, we'll line up our playhead, we'll tap on this track, tap again, and hit paste. There you go, pretty simple, yeah. We've got our whole drum kit there again, tap, and hit edit and we jump into our editor and again we're going to remove everything this time except the snare now block, block your ears if you don't want to hear that uh, that big noise again but we're going to do this and now we're going to tap anywhere and delete all those but this time of course we also have to delete the kicks so let's tap outside here Sorry for that. We're going to tap there and we're going to go delete. So now we've got just a snare track, right? We can come back out here. There you go. We've got our kick and now we've got our snare. So we'll come in here. Instead of original drums, we'll tap it. We'll rename it. 
and we'll make this one our, not surprisingly, snare. And now, look at this, we've got our kick and snare drum. If we solo just those two, we can actually play our kick and snare. Now you might be thinking, so what, Pete? But here's the cool thing. What we can do, let's say we want a whole bunch of reverb on this snare drum, right? We can just go nuts on the reverb and the delay and get a snare drum sound like this. Now, like you probably wouldn't have it that intense, but right, you can see what we can do here. And then say the kick drum, we don't want that much. We want just a little bit of reverb and maybe a little bit of delay there. But again, we can change up the compression settings. We can change different reverb settings. We can add different plugins to each individual drum sound. So we can bring the kick and snare together and get a sound like this. And I've overemphasized it right just to show you what you can do here. Okay, let's show you one more thing because something like the tom drums may require a little bit more treatment here. So let's jump in and show you that now. So once again, back to our original drums. We'll tap that, we'll tap it, we'll duplicate it, we'll tap it, we'll tap it again, we'll copy it. I know we have to do this every time, but honestly, it only takes a few minutes and then you've got ultimate control over your drums. We'll paste that in there. Here you go. This time we'll rename it. We'll come over here, we'll rename this one. We're going to go... Tom's. Shout out to all my friends Tom out there. Righty dokie, we can now tap in here, tap again, hit the edit button, and you know what we're doing. You know where we're at here. We're going to delete everything but the Tom's. But here's the thing, this time we've got that Tom, that Tom. That sounds like the start of El Scorcho by Weezer, doesn't it? Where's my Weezer fans at, right? Uh, so let's delete all these again. We go here like this, block your ears if you need to. There's all of the sounds. We'll tap, we'll hit delete. And then this time you will have to block your ears because this is going to be the kick and snare together. So tap outside. That was intense. All right, we'll tap, we'll hit delete. And now we've got just our tom drums, right? So our toms are all on one particular track here. So look at this. We come back out, we slide out our mixer there. And now we've got our kick, our snare. And when we have a tom fill here, let's take a listen. Still got that ridiculous like echoey 80s snare there but you get the gist here right all you need to do then is do your hi-hats your ride your crash cymbals you can split it out however you want if you want to just split it into three or four tracks you can do that if you want to split it to like eight separate tracks for every different drum piece you can do that and the even cooler thing here and you're probably ahead of me is if you want to add in a second drum kit to add say a second crash cymbal you can do exactly that as well in fact let's jump back to my original project so you can see how that actually actually works in a final mix. So here is that original mix here that you saw at the very start. Here's the original drums, and now we've got the kicks. We've got some double kicks because Jade, who programmed these drums, is insane and put some double kicks in here. We've got snare, toms, hats, crash one, and look at this, crash two, as well as our ride here. And you can see that these are actually on different kits. If we come in here and we look at our drum kit, our first crash is using this, our SoCal kit. If we go back to our track view and go to our second crash, we'll come on down, we'll tap on that one, and we look at the drums that we're using here look at this it's our sunset kit so how cool is this you know most of your kits only have the one crash but using this method you can split it out and put some of your crashes on one crash from one kit and the other crashes on a different kit. So you can use different kits and different pieces. You want a different kick drum and a different snare from two different kits? Guess what? You can do it. All you need to do is play in your original drums, keep your original drum track, and then split them out with your kick and your snare. How cool is that? So many options here when you split out your drums here in GarageBand. That's going to do it for this video, but don't miss the next one because I'm going to be showing you how we can use just some EQ and a little bit of distortion to get an epic kick and and snare sound on our individual tracks here in GarageBand. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.